Hey everybody, it's Mad Master here. This is like my fifth attempt trying to do this video. So just to preface this, this is kind of a warning uh, for people that don't want to hear about this stuff. You know, this is about the Chris Watts case and Shanann Watts. Shanann! Shanann! I could say it. I could say it? No. Uh, people make fun of me on the last video because I couldn't say it. So there's a lot of discussion of really bad, dark stuff in this video. So I'm just going to go there with that. Um, and... I know this is not the prime format for these kinds of videos, but I'm going to do it anyways. And, you know, just see, I'm just kind of putting feelers out there. Because I've been fascinated with this case for a couple of weeks now. So I bought this book. I'm going to read it. The Murders of Christopher Wasp. Wasp. <laughs> Freudian slip. Uh, <laughs> think of the band Wasp. Watts. So I have a lot of thoughts about this. It's really kind of taken me for a loop, and I've been kind of obsessed with it for the last couple of weeks. So I've been watching every podcast, reading every Reddit post, and I just, this rabbit hole is engulfing and all perpetuating. I am surprised and shocked at how popular and cult-like this whole thing is, this whole case. Like, you know, you know a lot of people like serial killers and stuff like that, is, and the murders were horrible, obviously, but just the amount of attention it got, it kind of rivals some of the serial killer obsession, honestly. Like, you know, you don't see, I mean, you don't see, like, a whole contingent of people, like, saying Jeffrey Dahmer's innocent and all the accuser, or all the people that accuse him of stuff were evil, and then the other side say, no, those people are evil, blah, blah, blah. You know, you don't see these weird polarized sides of the Jeffrey Dahmer thing. It's pretty cut and dry, pun intended. <laughs> You know, kind of trade. Well, anyways, it's terrible humor. So, anyways, uh, I've been in a true crime for a couple of years now. You know, my father was a true crime writer, just by the way. If you know who he is, I'm not going to say. Um, so, it's kind of funny because he is a true crime writer. And I was kind of uh, got into it because of this podcast, Morbid. So, I listened to that a lot and got read, read some books. So, I even bought, you know, this, this book. This is the latest book on the Chris Watts case that I bought. Now, I'm going to talk about this because I have a lot to say about this. So my, my mind, you know, might not be completely organized in this video when I talk about this and what, what I have to say about it, because I do have a lot to say. So this might be a series of videos for all I know. So first of all, I relate to both parties in this situation, the adult parties. You know, Chris Watts, you know, I've been passive and I can see this passivity in my own relationships, in my own life. But I can also see Shanann's, you know, kind of go-getter thing, too. And some of her new age, kind of positive thinking kind of stuff I relate to as well. Now, this whole thing it also reminds me relatives, friends, people's situations. They get into these relationships and just how weird these things become and convoluted. It makes me think, it made me think a lot about stuff. So the irony is 2019... I had broken up with a girlfriend and I started to see a shrink and lo and behold, what did he, I didn't know anything about this, by the way, I, didn't, I probably heard about it on the news, like in passing or something. Maybe I wasn't really paying attention to that kind of stuff. So lo and behold, what book did he recommend? He recommended the same book that Shanann bought Chris, uh, before, you know, before her un and, and her children's unfortunate demise. And, you know, it's about attachment styles and stuff. And the thing is, it's like, I think she did, you know, one thing I want to say is this weird cult of this whole thing is just so strange, this whole rabbit hole that people are down, that there are people are going down. And it's, it's just really bizarre and really weird. So Hold Me Tight is the name of the book, by the way, if you didn't catch on to that. So... They bought, I didn't read the book, but I was having trouble in my relationship and these attachment styles things. I think Shanann Watts wanted to uh, resolve things. Now, there's a lot of people that are basically Chris Watts chants in a way, and I'm just like shocked by that. Now, it's good, it's good to call into question what he did and how he did things, or what she did and how she did things. Uh, Munchausen syndrome has been, you know, uh, hypothetic, hypoth hypoth Hypothetically, uh, uh, you know, hypothetically suggested in this situation, Munchausen by proxy and, you know, hypochondria. As a person who knows someone who has hypochondria, and or 
someone argue a couple people that I've known throughout my life and someone and also that knows people with hypochondriacs who have who are hypochondriacs who have actual conditions along with a hypochondria because they'll kind of trick themselves into thinking they have something and then they will have something that's like this weird convoluted mix of, th of, of things with that so it's really interesting to think about that I don't know if Shanann had lupus I don't know if it's it was officially diagnosed she got pregnant three times so I don't know you know it could be a spectrum of things that are going on with that I think she was deeply troubled I think she had a lot of a lot of problems I think she was very gorgeous um very beautiful full of life even if you know some of there's some of the stuff she was into was scam a little bit scammy or scam adjacent I'm using that word again <laughs> scam adjacent you know it was a little bit weird um Chris Watts is a poser and a coward. I mean, from the metalhead point of view, is the only metal band you like Metallica? I mean, come on. He got a load tat a load era tattoo on his back. It's like, what the fuck? Anyways, I'm just I'm just saying. It's so it's a dork, okay, it's a big dork. Um But I know people like this that have this kind of passivity to them, and I have kind of expunged a lot of that from my life over the last couple of years. And in fact, you know, really, at the end of the day, I was never really like that in, in personal. Like, if you got to know me, I was never like that. I was never super quiet with people I got to know. I'll talk their ear off, but at the same time, you know, public gathering, I won't talk at all, you know, or work or something, you know. But I know this kind of personality. And I think, I don't know if he was autistic or, you know. I, what I don't like is when people say oh, Shanann was a sociopath or a narcissist or Chris Watts was or the mom was or the both moms were or all this stuff. It's like, or Nicole Kessinger was or whatever. It's like, you don't know what they are. You can't diagnose, diagnose people. The gold water rule applies. You know, it's just stupid. And I hate that. I hate the labels and stuff that people give these people. Now, at the same time, you know, I, I think uh, what happened was this guy probably was passive his entire life, Chris Watts. And he, this is, this kind of goes into this little, I, I, I did another version of this video that I just kind of threw, threw out because it was just, I, I'm rambling really fast now. <laughs> I'm talking a lot faster. It's just a lot better. I'm getting to the point a lot faster than this previous video that I did, that I scrapped. So this whole thing, like, I see it as this persona, his psyche splitting between this old self and this new self that he has. And some of this is, comes from like dating stuff that I've read, Manosphere, you know, stuff I've read, you know, male, alpha, not, not alpha males necessarily, but like this beta versus alpha versus chump, AFC, pickup artist kind of stuff. Like some of this can tie into some of those, like maybe evolutionary ideas that these guys get that from, or, the other way around, you know, they, it, it's kind of hard to explain what I mean by this, but like, this is guy, he's a, this, for all intents and purposes, he's a chump, or as some of these guys, the slang is chode, you know, some of these guys, like these, these uh, guys in the manosphere used to call that, them, that, this kind of guy, and he's like, can't think for himself, he doesn't really, his identity is not fully formed, he doesn't have a full identity, for whatever reason, he was suppressed, you know, by, you know, he had this weird upbringing. Obviously, both of them had really weird childhoods and adolescence. Uh, you know, they, they, there's no denying that, you know. You watch, you look at old pictures of Shanann, and she definitely looks troubled, and she was troubled, deeply emotionally troubled and disturbed. Both of them. Both of them. Now, I think Shanann had a lot more potential because she was starting to see that there was something wrong with this relationship, looking in, inwards. I don't care what people say. I don't think that's a sign of a narcissist to do those. So she probably just use it to manipulate. You know, I had relatives that said that about another relative once. She just, we, we go to therapy, she probably just to manipulate the situation. I'm reading too many stupid fucking blogs about, how, oh, she's a narcissist. Oh, fuck off. Anyways, who are the other relatives? She accused of being a narcissist. You know, it's just so stupid. These people ugh, read these stupid blogs and think they're, they're a psychological uh, expert or therapist, you know, it's so stupid. Anyways, I'm not gonna go about that. It's pretty terrible if people knew.
who I was talking about, but it, it's true. This was a stupid notion she got in her head. It was really dumb, and I thought it was really ridiculous, you know? So anyway, <laughs> so anyways, this whole thing, I think what happened was he didn't have a fully formed ego or whatever you want to call it. And so he was a very naive guy too. He was probably, you know, I think it was the, the word on the street, he was a virgin before he met Shanann. I mean, that was his first real relationship. Now I can't talk because, you know, I'm not a virgin by any means, but I haven't really had a super long-term relationship. So I'd probably be in a very interesting situation with that too, you know, but it was, uh, uh, you know, it was just kind of this thing, like he went along with this whole thing. He just went along with everything because he'd used being used to doing that. So this identity change that happened awoken something within him that just was confusing. And it was, it, it's like kind of like a slow, I'm, I'm going to describe it as a slow psychotic break that happened with reality. Because this is Nicole Kessinger, who I think did ab ab on to do this, by the way. It's never been proven, but... I don't think it was necessarily her intention, but like he interpreted this stuff as I have to get rid of my family, blah, blah, blah. So he had this psychotic break. And I think they were, I think they did know each other way before May or June of 2018, by the way, too. That's been speculated. I, I believe that because there was internet searches. I'm not going to go in all the, the forensics of this case. I'm just going into the psychological analysis. I'm not a psychiatrist or psychologist. I'm not a therapist. I don't know anything. So I, I ironically, I'm making kind of a, hypocritical gesture in this. I'm just talking about my hypothesis. I'm not going to label him something one way or the other. So don't get me wrong. I'm not labeling him. I'm just giving my sort of theory or hypothesis of what happened. So I don't care if I'm wrong. I'm not going to say, well, da, 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 labels, labels, labels. No. So the psyche kind of hit the other, the, the new Chris, the old Chris and the new Chris were at odds. So they split and he became a murderous, you know, psycho, essentially. So that's my idea because it's kind of like, uh, because I've studied a lot of this stuff, a lot of this new age woo stuff, a lot of this sort of dating pickup kind of stuff or manosphere stuff, like the more philosophical side of it. I'm not talking about like the, you know, how to get laid in five days thing. I'm talking about like these really interesting, like philosophical guys that talk about this stuff and they talk, they, it's all tied into all of a lot of these industries are actually kind of tied together, including the MLM stuff is kind of related to that too, by the way. So ironically enough, the health thing. So I've read a lot of this stuff and I've read actual psycho psychotic literature, psychological literature about this stuff too. So I'm kind of tying these, all these ideas together that I have within this, this realm of what I theorize happened. So he, he met this woman and he was confident, he was working out, he became this different person and it's, it just split his psyche. Like, who am I? I don't know. So I have to, uh, it, it confused him so much. It's like, I have to kill this old identity. I have to literally kill this old identity because I don't know who this is. And it just, it was a, tor a torturous mindset that he was going through, which obviously he needed psychological help in very extreme way before he did these murders. And there are theories about, you know, conspiracy with the company and blowing up the oil field. And I don't know about all that. The fire stick was code and hell. No, I'm not gonna talk about that. Maybe there was some stuff with that too, but I'm talking about just the motivation based on the evidence that we have that's actually like provable at this point. Like not the stuff that hasn't been like, that's kind of vague or nebulous that we haven't really gone into enough and I think there should be more investigation by the way including of MK you know so this is my theory I'm just saying I think this he hit this wall and he couldn't get out otherwise you know and he, he was an idiot he was a moron he was a doofus the guy's a doofus you watch him ooh, 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 ooh. he's an idiot I mean obviously he changed his body as I'm slowly trying to do and um you know got better he got more confident and more Oh, I'm a different person, you know, I've lost 60 pounds and, but it's just, it's just like such a sick thing that happened because obviously his identity was formed. I mean, just to give an example, Ronnie Watts, his, his father allegedly got on cocaine because he left the house. These people do not have, they have maladaptive behaviors to trauma and situations already. 
okay, there's a lot of stuff going on in that Watts household and the, you know, Shanann's uh, family too, I, I believe. So I believe these things are, you know, very complicated, but they really do hit home, like I said, because I bought that, that book based on my own relationship kind of failing and I wanted to study it, uh, you know, attachment styles. I'm, a, I'm definitely an, on the avoidant side, maybe anxious avoidant, but you know, it's like, um, hold me tight, the book. I mean, it's like, I could pull, pick it up from my you know library right now. So it's, it's like five feet away. It's just so weird that she bought that book. And I'm just like, just, it's so interesting, you know, but I wish she would have lived because I think she would have done something a little bit better than MLM eventually. I could see her doing something more I think she was an extremely creative person and I think she just didn't know how to like get into like a creative sense that's independent of this kind of thing, you know, like the MLM or what marketing stuff. But I think she eventually would have, that's my theory. But yeah, that guy, that Chris Watts, it's just, just gives me a weird vibe when I watch him. I'm just like, what is this guy? It reminds me of a few people I've known, strangely enough and scarily enough. Of course, I mean, fortunately a few of those people did get divorced, you know, and they were, uh, they went to the bottle instead of, you know, doing more violent kind of stuff. So, uh, kudos to them, I guess, you know, but there's been some weird people that I've known too. And it just relates. It's so relatable. So the whole Watts case is so relatable. And so like, wow, these, I relate to this, you know, to hearing about this stuff. And that's why you get kind of sucked into it. And you're just, oh, that's kind of like me or that person, that person reminded me of this person. So that's why it's so, and there's these weird layers of an onion with all this stuff, with the, this conspiracy kind of stuff, which I don't know about, you know, I'm not going to say, but I think Nicole Kessinger should get investigated, you know, some of the stuff, obviously more questions need to be asked. But other than that, you know, I think the whole thing is a case of a guy's identity breaking, his psyche breaking in two and in a scramble becoming instruct or instruct destructive as a result that's about all